Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's day 461. This was two apartments ago back when times were good for my lemon trees, which of course implies that times weren't good later on. So you can see there's a little bit of leaf curling on the top for the new foliage for the second plant. And the first mover has a little bit of leaf yellowing at the bottom. But otherwise than that, this was actually, I wouldn't say a golden age for my lemon trees, but it was sort of the zenith of their health and growth and that's part of the reason why I didn't do an update for a really long time so I moved in rapid succession over the span of eight months to two new places and my career has been going really really well so I've focused a lot of energy on that and that's um, well part of the reason why I didn't update for a really long time on this series so this is showing day 500 footage. The balcony here is very long and spacious compared to anything I've ever had before. But it's also on the ground floor. So there were a lot of spider webs and it's not the spiders themselves that are causing problems, but just their mere presence in such large numbers. I would have to clear the cobwebs off this balcony every two weeks and in mass. Um, that shows that there's a lot of prey present and there's possibly spider mites infesting my plants um, but it's not really ever proven at least not in the eight months that i was there that that was the case but there's all sorts of pests there were a lot of snails and other things that would come on to my balcony and eat my plants and that's sort of expected on the ground floor but also there's the problem of very tall old trees um, from the landscaping just blocking out sunlight so although this balcony railing isn't a wall that blocks out light like I had in the previous apartment, it's basically a situation where there's supposed to be a few hours of sunlight a day, but it's not very strong sunlight as you can see here. So you can see my plant health is on the decline in this new environment because it's still not very sunny and there are a lot of insect pests and also mollusks as well. Um, so there's a lot of snails and other things that are just really disgusting and eating my plants all the time. And I'll show you a lot more footage about that later. So on day 557, you can see so many of the leaves have fallen off of the first mover. And given the smaller stature of the second mover, I don't think it's going to fare any better. So that's what it looked like at this point. You can see some new foliage on top, which was promising, but at the same time, look at all the webs covering all that foliage. So it's just nonstop clearing of cobwebs in this place. It's a pretty horrible environment. It was very noisy as well because there were all these AC compressors nearby my bedroom window um, forward beyond what you can see here. So it was just uh, not a great environment and there was a lot of crap falling down from the trees. So day 573, it's total cessation of growth and more shed leaves. So I knew all my plants were in big trouble, but given the environment, there wasn't that much I could do. Um, I thought they had enough light, certainly more light than the last place to thrive. But since there were a lot of pests that I didn't encounter in the previous place being on the second story, and in all of my previous apartments that were on the third or um, yeah usually the third floor I believe or sometimes even the fourth floor so in clean environments like I had uh, in years past on the third or fourth floor none of that stuff would happen so on day 586 um, it's a classic case of when you have plants growing in low light conditions everything falls over especially when the foliage is wet I've demonstrated this over and over again and uh, basically at this point I decided to do some pruning which I'm normally very loath to do but I feel like um, you know I should just do what's right and uh, bite the bullet right now and basically do it because the plants are in poor health and I don't have uh, you know any desire to see this thing just completely keel over and and make it like an, a reverse u-shape and just touch the ground eventually so this place is completely infested with snails and this is a very common sight so this is some uh, good nighttime footage where i use my led panels to uh, get a good view of what's going on 
so I'm tired of this thing tipping over and although it hurts to see that uh, I think in the long run this will help my plants be much more robust and you can see in the background uh, the mango is trying to sprout some new leaves and that was a an epic struggle that's still not resolved to this day and for this plant um, the second mover um, you know it was also very top heavy it's more a question of the, the stems being not strong enough, not thick enough, which will come with age and development. But um, this is day 595. I'm dealing with snails manually. I was just kicking them off and throwing them way out um, beyond the balcony, like 50 feet. But at some point, I just got sick of these things and uh, I started smashing them with my broom and just like sweeping them away. So, um, yeah, that's basically where we're at in this point in this apartment just a few months in like everything fell off and uh, my plants were mostly in dire straits except for the Joshua tree which is uh, a real champion among all this so that thing can thrive in almost all conditions once it's established um, so yeah you have two snails right here and there are some that are just even bigger than this so um, it's just like big snails coming over all the time uh, at night when you're not paying attention and eating everything. So you can step onto your balcony, you know, like two weeks later, a month later, and you're like, how come there's no foliage growth or the foliage has holes in it? Or there's sometimes the entire leaves are, are gone and, uh, you know, the bark can be stripped off to an extent. So I don't even know if it's always snails, but... Up until this point, I was just kind of brushing them off and they would keep coming back. And, um, you know, I was a little bit demoralized with my plants at this point. And, uh, you know, things were actually going really well at work with my job. So uh, I didn't really, you know, have the energy or time to want to devote to solving these problems and documenting everything and, uh, you know, uploading it on YouTube regularly. But, um, yeah, you can see here there's some last hope. It stays 621. There's beautiful new growth covered in, in threads of silk on this first mover. So it looks like there is a little bit more growth, but uh, everything below this point is just a disaster. So um, it's, as I mentioned before, everything's just covered in spiders constantly. Like every two weeks when I would go out on the balcony and try to take care of stuff uh, there was just like webs on everything it was really disgusting and I, I bought this cheap broom and basically took care of business and kept trying to remove all these webs and uh, snails and whatnot you can see the leaves here have been eaten by uh, snails and there's some new growth attempts like right here which is uh, interesting but uh, overall like this environment was just a really bad one for my plants and uh, I was only here for eight months but you can see here the bark's been stripped off and I really didn't know what was going on there I know that uh, for all trees they expand and shed off the old bark but that just looked like some animal had come over and ripped that stuff off ate it basically so I'm not quite sure what it was like maybe it was just like some kind of beetle they just like ate all the bark off and ran away or uh i don't i don't think snails do that so uh it's a real puzzle but that's been with me ever since um basically the scar on the base of the trunk of of the second plant so um yeah i had this uh water sprayer since the last apartment it's it's a really fun tool and i used it um not just to water but to wash all the leaves because uh, everything gets all nasty here and uh, it's just totally unpresentable for filming basically if I don't do some washing they're just covered in in dust and webs and dead bugs and stuff like that and snail droppings so uh, you can see a little bit of a rainbow there so uh, yeah that this is basically the highlight of this balcony right here for this eight months um, having these uh, artificial mist rainbows was basically the highlight because uh, other than my Joshua tree just chugging along, everything else was really, really struggling. So this was a very demoralizing period for most of my balcony plants. But this channel is about troubleshooting and keenly observing things and, and figuring out ways in which uh, your plants are being harmed and how to solve those problems as it is to do with success and 
Um, you know, there are plenty of channels out there that are just like, look at my giant uh, horde of plants in my huge yard. And, uh, you know, some people have a lot of space inside their homes too, They're growing a bunch of indoor stuff. And they were just showing like the really, really successful stuff and uh, never any of the struggles or, uh, you know, what's going on there. And, you know, they're just like talking in front of like a billion successful plants for like 10 whole minutes or 30 minutes. So uh, my channel is quite different. So I'm basically openly admitting failure in a lot of cases. Uh, I know some of you will probably joke that, you know, it's very rare that I succeed. But um, I think for most plant growers, especially beginners, uh, noobs, as I was, uh, you know, in the very beginning, like rewinding 10 years into this channel, uh, basically we all make sort of the same mistakes. And it's easy for people to just go, well, you know, these things grow like weeds. You could just plant them outside, throw them over your shoulder, and they start growing, you know, in a place like Florida or, or some other, you know, jungle environment. And that's just not the case for most people in the world. I think uh, most people, especially apartment dwellers, are going to struggle. And basically, I feel like that phase of the channel or my life experience with plant growing is basically wrapping up because I stayed at this place for eight months, uh, which introduced some new problems due to being on the ground floor with all this uh, leaf litter outside and uh, a tree canopy. But basically... Um, you'll see that I moved to a much better environment and that changes the game yet again. So all of these apartment problems um, that I had may soon be uh, coming to an end and, and just never coming back. And then I'll have a new slew of problems, I'm sure. But uh, as everyone knows, it's basically better to be growing things in full sun. And on day 720, you can see that I moved into a new place yet again. And these leaves have been absolutely chewed up and devastated by snails. And um, my plants have never had access to full sunlight until now. So this is the beginning of 2022. And you can see um, that all of the old scars and battle wounds are still there from the snails. And I hadn't really seen any snails in this new place yet. But on day 754, this was over a month later, you can see all the old foliage, uh, well actually that was new foliage, it's burning up in the full sun. And I totally expected this because none of my plants had been accustomed to full sun. So other than the Joshua tree being really, really tough, I expected the old problems I had um, to sort of wrap up. And for some of my other plants, um, basically, yeah, they really struggled. They, they burned up and they kept trying to send out new shoots in this new environment. And it was just a period of adaptation, which is probably pretty stressful for the plants. But once they get the right uh, sort of chlorophyll density in their leaves and get smaller leaves and adapt to this much hotter, um, probably much drier environment as well because there's sun beating down all day, then um, I think they should flourish. But here I'm washing away uh, the remaining um, detritus and sticky crap from the last place these were at. You can see the pomegranate seedlings there are quite beat up as well and they burned up and need to recover. So it's day 768 and you can see here there's still that place where the bark was chewed off but otherwise than that um, I'm not sure that it's necessarily um, you know a big problem for that plant. It wasn't doing any you know it wasn't really going anywhere anyway but um i think this first mover is basically going to take over this pot because it's taller it's uh way faster to recover it's probably got a much better root system so you can see you can start with two seeds with identical conditions but over time it's just the butterfly effect it's not always just genetics um, but the one will win out and have that you know first mover advantage and it just keeps rolling and rolling and it does better and better relative to the other plant it's sharing a pot with so um i kept the other plant just because i don't like the idea of removing my backups and and having no backups in this pot for this species this growing series that would be like throwing away your spare tire uh, just because you don't think you're going to use it so um 
Yeah, I was doing some watering with this garden sprayer, this hose in the front yard, which is mostly just paved slabs of uh, concrete painted over. So it's a really different environment. It's a lot cleaner than the, the last place because there's no um, giant canopy overhead. And these are finally out from under the awning of a roof. Um, they're not shaded by balcony rails or walls or anything like that. And basically, they're free to get sunlight all day, basically. It's, it's basically full sun. So this is day 775. You can see the foliage is um, it's slowly coming back. And I'm sort of glad it's coming back at the bottom. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with the top here. Like, look at this. I mean, it's basically all gone up there. So I might actually just trim it because um, I don't want it to get top heavy again at one point. So for the second mover, it's just languishing. It's not really going anywhere. So uh, I don't know at which point I might just decide to just rip that whole thing up. But in doing so, I might also just yank up this entire um, sand and, and clay soil dirt ball. So I don't know if that's something I could even easily remove. If it's all rotten in the root system underneath, then it would be easy to pull it out. But if it's still got a healthy root system, it might be a real uh, tough assignment. So you can see the webs there. Um, and on this day, I decided to just do some pruning. So um, yeah, the stems aren't dry. It's still alive inside. But I figured at this point, since there's no foliage up there, I might as well prevent these things from getting top heavy way into the future and just like um, prune them so they get really, really bushy, which is what some of you have been uh, suggesting from the very beginning going back many many years with some of my different plants fruit trees so uh, it's day 798 turns out snails run rampant here there's a lot of big ones um, I'm sure a lot of you who live in homes houses townhouses have these problems as well so I'm starting to face all new problems uh, I had this uh, bag of iron phosphate pellets which is good for killing snails and slugs um, in my previous apartment I just didn't show footage for this video but I did for some of my other plants where I sprinkle some of these iron phosphate pellets and the snails run up to eat them and basically they um, die for really unknown reasons you know the chemistry is not clear nobody really knows why iron phosphate works because it doesn't harm uh, these plants and it doesn't harm us like if I ate this nothing would really happen to me well I get iron poisoning if I ate a lot of it I guess but um, basically they run over immediately and eat these things and I guess snails and other wild animals they're probably starved of minerals it's kind of like how um, you know wild sheep will go to places to lick minerals uh, where there are some exposed rocks with high mineral concentrations that they really need so Animals need micronutrients of all sorts, and I think, uh, just like us, uh, many wild animals out there are sort of malnourished with respect to many micronutrients, so they look for these things and seek them out. They don't just, you know, go for food and water all the time. They, they have that instinct to seek out minerals. So you can see this snail is just eating that thing, like, immediately, and they're kind of slow, so this footage is on three times fast forward and they're sort of translucent as well so you can see the pellet being ingested muscles moving around so it's day 811 and you can see the the top foliage there has been ravaged once again by snails so uh, with enough rainfall i think those pellets just dissolve and then you have to apply more and i scatter some around in the perimeter as well so the the mechanism of iron phosphate killing snails and slugs is unknown but it's said in the literature that they basically eat those and then for whatever reason they just stop eating and eventually they starve to death so you'll find an empty shell here or there um, I think they just shrivel up basically dry out or maybe birds or uh, whatever other predators will just like eat the snail um, after it's caught out in the daylight just not moving like that but um yeah, I'm sure lots of you homeowners uh, have this experience where snails just crawl on your front door and they crawl all over the place really high and just kind of hide and dry up. 
uh, even when you don't have any um, you know pesticides to get rid of them so it's just kind of a annoying disgusting pest and uh, you can see there's an empty shell just floating around there so yeah that this uh, has been a great amount of footage over a year and basically my lemon trees are in a state of recovering and this is the last clip which is already in mid-April 2022 if I didn't sprinkle all these iron phosphate pellets around, my plants would be gone. Like all of this foliage would be ravaged and the plant would starve to death because it would just deplete all of the nutrients that are used to grow these new leaves from the root system without getting anything in return. So it's basically the snails of the plants. So thanks for watching this very long episode. I hope to have more updates on my plant series in the future. Uh, thanks for watching.